The next step in building this type of snow shelter is to put a roof on it. And this is really what uh, gives it a variety of names. The easiest and quickest roof to throw on this uh, comes if you are carrying a small tarp with you. Uh, but you can also improvise that tarp in the backcountry. Uh, either way, uh, in regards to that solution, you want to start by building a framework of stout sticks or branches or poles or trees across the top of this trench. So you can harvest these typically by hand. If you have a saw of some sort, you can of course cut them to length, but that's really not necessary. But you really, you want to start by just gathering those sticks and uh, laying them across similar to rafters in the roof of a house across the length of your trench. You could get by with as few as four to six of these, um, but if you can increase that number and then also create a, a grid work going back the other direction, the lengthwise direction of, uh, of the trench, you'll, you'll more uh, maximize what your uh, tarp can hold in terms of the weight of the snow. So create that grid work back and forth across the trench uh, for number one. You're going to eventually cover this with a tarp and then snow on top of that to add insulation. If you don't have the tarp, you can use additional branches and boughs. So on top of this framework, you would add more and more smaller branches that continue to branch out. And then the boughs of trees. Coniferous trees work particularly well for this, which uh, typically are more present in mountain environments that are drier. Instead of sticks, you can of course also use what you have at hand, snowshoes, ski poles, trekking poles, a probe, really whatever you have on you, just trying to create a, a structural framework on which you can pile snow. If you have that tarp, that's really ideal. Even a four foot by six foot small tarp or a piece of plastic sheeting, polyethylene sheeting, or a piece of nylon, an old ripped uh, tent fly, anything you have to catch the snow is what you're looking for here. So once you create that framework, you're gonna spread that tarp out. You know, very typically in the mountains, especially where we are in Colorado, we see a lot of wind. So the first thing you wanna do is weight down the corners with a chunk of snow or a shovel full of snow, a rock, whatever you have, uh, just to hold it from blowing away. Once you get it flat out, you're just going to start shoveling on the snow and scoop it on. We're eventually looking to get this a foot or more thick. So, you know, you have it weighed out and flat and then just start shoveling it on. It doesn't necessarily matter whether it's powder snow or chunks. Uh, of course, if it's too big a chunk with too light a framework, that could be a problem. But really, you're just going to start scooping this on and shoveling it on. You're making a flat roof here. If you want to peak the exterior, uh, of the the actual roof itself the snow you can do that but it's not really necessary just start shoveling it on across your framework to completely cover that tarp if you have used branches and boughs instead there's going to be a little bit of snow that filters through and falls down into the trench itself so in the order we're covering this here we haven't yet put a mattress or bed of any kind in the trench and that's to leave you room for that the if you're using a tarp, there's really very little chance that a, that any snow is going to come through. But if you're using branches, some will eventually fall through. And if you've already built your bed inside, that snow will end up on top of your bed. So we typically, when we're using a tarp, uh, you, can, you can do that bed ahead of time. But we leave the room that if you're going to use just branches and improvise this without any gear at all, then uh, you build the bed afterwards. So I'll completely cover that tarp or roof framework, whatever you have, with snow up to uh, potentially a foot thick to add that insulation on top. The other solution you have for the roof is what gives this uh, snow trench shelter the alternate name, the doghouse. And you're essentially cutting slabs of snow that you tip together into an A-frame peaked roof that resembles a doghouse. This is extremely dependent on the snow conditions that you find. So while it's, it's really great to build one of these from scratch, there's a lot of conditions when the snow is really powdery or sugary that this just will not work. So the tarp is a great uh, backup. But if you want to build one of these, uh, it's a great exercise and a great back pocket tool to have in the event of an emergency. You again begin by just digging out your trench as before. And then we're looking to carve out slabs. So it's helpful to look around for a quarry site. Sometimes these can come directly out of 
the trench itself. So as you can see here, I'm digging these slabs. I'm carving in with that uh, spade of my shovel really vertically, carving those sides very cleanly around the sides and the back. And then we're going to go underneath and carve the same thing. And you'll see pretty quickly it sort of separates from the rest. And I can lift it out. So you, of course, need two of these slabs that tip in together at a time. And it usually takes uh, either three or four pairs of these, depending on how big you carve them, to cover the full length of your shelter. So that's uh, six to eight of these slabs. So I carve underneath. You can see it breaks loose. And then I set the shovel aside uh, and slide my hands underneath here. And this is the one place where a tool called a snow saw can come in really handy. I've personally never really gotten in the habit of using a snow saw. But when you're cutting out slabs and want those clean edges, a snow saw makes that even easier than it is with, with a shovel. So you could do this with something as simple as a stick, but the more refined that tool gets specific to the job, the easier it gets and the better your slabs come out. Now, of course, it goes without saying that if the snow is not cohesive and sticking together, we can't lift these slabs out. So that tarp is a great backup option when the snow is really powdery or when you don't know what you're going to run into. But if you can find that quarry site or a good snowpack, you can carve these slabs really large and actually relatively thin, and they'll still maintain their strength. So carve out two slabs at a time, sit them aside. You'll see that I sort of balance each one on each side of the trench, and that's again where having those very vertical walls and strong tops comes in handy because you can stand the slabs on there. If a slab breaks, as you see here, and I end up with a triangular section, I can use that uh, to, uh, to, to give additional support to those slabs at the end of the shelter where we have this triangular space. It's not necessary. You can completely lean these slabs together with no additional buttress or, or keystone sort of support. You're just leaning them together. But if you end up with something like that triangle, you might as well make use of it both to plug air holes and offer additional support. So um, it's more typical to have to go elsewhere and quarry these slabs from somewhere nearby as opposed to digging them out of your trench itself. Uh, if you're lucky enough to get them out of your trench, then it's, it's the old two birds with one stone. Uh, and in this case, you're saving a lot of energy in that case. But, um, but really, typically, we have to go a little ways away and look for that good quarry spot because it's, it's atypical to find good quarrying snow, snow that you can harvest from an area for slabs, in the exact place you want to build your shelter in regards to rescue and wind and things. So um, look around, you know, use that probe, get rid of that top layer of powder and get down to that snowpack where it's really going to stick together and you can create good slabs out of this. You'll see that here I lean the, the two slabs at a time pretty much directly on one another. But a tip here would be if you you know, if you offset them by about halfway, so they're each over, only overlapping by about 50% or halfway, it makes leaning the next slab on a lot easier. The first two are typically the, the most difficult, and you'll see that you need to arrange them at the same time, and you're leaning them both in. Doing that alone can be a little challenging. But if you do offset them by 50% or so, when you lean in that third slab, you already have a ledge or the other the slab on the other side to lean it against so it makes it a little easier and you're only managing one at a time if you choose not to do it that way of course it still works you can just lean each pair in uh, at a time together and that works fine as well it's just a little more challenging and a little higher risk of having one of those slabs crack while you're leaning it so you'll continue down the length of your trench, leaning these slabs together, and then any space that's left in the top, I tend to, I will fill in with chunks and powder and things. You want to kind of, kind of fill in those holes with whatever you have available, uh, both for airflow but also structure. And eventually, these will all center and and sort of melt together and become even stronger. So. Uh, you, you get that nice peaked roof, fill in the gap to make sure there's no air holes for draft, um, and just work yourself down the length of the whole shelter, the full trench, uh, six or eight slabs all together, plus potentially end caps and filling in any holes that you need to. And by the end, you'll see that you end up with this peaked roof that resembles somewhat a traditional classic doghouse. And so this technique, putting this roof on with the lean slabs, is what gives this one the name, the doghouse. 
and the snow trench is more typically reserved for that with the flat roof and the tarp. You can, of course, sort of blend the lines here. There's nothing that says, there's no textbook that says uh, you have to do it this way. So do what works for you, given the materials and conditions you have available. I tell my survival students that survival is not multiple choice. It is not true or false. There are no right answers except for the fact that you live or die. And that's the only thing that matters. So your shelter does not have to look like anything you've ever seen in a, in a picture or what anybody else has ever done before. So be creative, use what's available uh, given the conditions. So for instance, here, instead of using the tarp to be flat or using snow slabs to be peaked, you could essentially dig a trench and then build a tarp A-frame over your shelter. So run a ridge line and string your tarp over it and then continue to add materials on top of that. Or alternatively, uh, instead of a ridge line, run a ridge pole and then you can lean either the tarp or brush against that and then snow on top of that. So you can still end up with the uh, peaked roof doghouse look, but have it actually supported by a ridge pole uh, with materials over top of that. So just uh, certainly think outside the proverbial box on this one. Besides not needing a tarp or other uh, human-made materials in this case, another advantage of the doghouse is that peaked roof gets you some additional height on this trench. So instead of digging it down two or three feet, if there's less snow, say a foot and a half or so, but you can quarry slabs, you gain additional head height. So when you're trying to wiggle your way in there, it gives you some additional height above the actual snowpack level. So it's, it's one additional bonus if these things work out. You don't need to dig the snow, dig the trenches deep. 